seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, lift off. And that was a simulation of SpaceX's first crewed flight of 2020. It was shared by CEO Elon Musk on Twitter earlier today. Also expected in 2020, at least three separate space agencies are planning to send robots to Mars. Joining me now from the Kennedy Space, space Center to explain all of this and more is CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood. Bill, let's start with the efforts by some of these private space companies to actually send astronauts into space. How, how do they plan to do this and how significant is this? Well, you know, it's really hard to overstate the importance of this to NASA. You know, the last time U.S. astronauts were launched on American rockets from U.S. soil was during the last shuttle mission back in July 2011. Ever since then, NASA has been paying the Russians to ferry astronauts to and from the International Space Station at prices of more than $80 million a seat. Uh, so they're very eager to get these new commercial cruise ships being built by Boeing and SpaceX off the ground. Now, as you said, uh, SpaceX appears to be pretty close to launching. Uh, they have a critical test coming up in January where they're going to test the abort system of their Crew Dragon spacecraft while it's in flight. If that test goes well, uh, presumably they'll be ready to launch two astronauts to the station sometime uh, in the February, March, April time frame, something like that. We don't know for sure yet. And of course, if you recall, just a few weeks ago, Boeing launched uh, its Starliner spacecraft on an unpiloted flight. It didn't go perfectly, but the capsule safely back down on the ground, and they too are getting ready to launch astronauts. So hopefully, long answer to your question, sometime in the first half of 2020, we're going to see astronauts flying out of here, out of the Kennedy Space Center and the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, and that's a very big deal indeed for NASA. Absolutely. And NASA announced its plan to send astronauts back to the moon, but not until 2024. So what do they have to get done this year in order to keep on that timeline? Well, they have to get a lot of money from Congress. That's the short <laughs> answer. Uh, you know, NASA hasn't, they haven't told us yet what the Artemis moon program is going to cost. Uh, the administrator, Jim Bridenstine, has promised a, an accounting when the February, you know, the federal budget comes out in February for fiscal 2020. In 2021, and so hopefully we're going to see numbers in that about just what it will cost. But you know, the Trump administration asked for a supplemental 1.6 billion dollars for NASA last year. They're getting 1.3 billion of that, and that's going to kickstart the development of the lander they need to carry astronauts down to the surface. So hopefully they're going to announce contracts for that lander in 2020, early 2020, and so work will get started on that while we have all this work by Boeing and SpaceX going on uh, for the space station. So quite a lot going on right now for NASA. But what about space tourism? Is 2020 going to be the year that this industry finally takes off? Well, we think so. You know, space, uh, Virgin Galactic, that's the company owned by uh, Sir Richard Branson, and Blue Origin, that's a company owned by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. Both companies are building suborbital rockets. In the case of Virgin, it's a rocket plane uh, that would carry tourists up to uh, above 100 kilometers or 62 miles or so. That's kind of the, the somewhat arbitrary definition of the boundary of space. Uh, Bezos' Blue Origin is doing the same thing with a different type of spacecraft. They've both flown multiple test flights, and I think everybody's very uh, eager to see when they will begin launching tourists. You mentioned, can you afford it? Uh, that's a really good question. We think the initial tickets to ride on these rockets is, you know, somewhere in the order of a couple of hundred thousand dollars. But as time goes on, uh, both companies think that price will fall. And, and at some point, it may get down in the realm that um, I'll call it relatively normal people uh, <laughs> might be able to buy a ticket to space. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. But first flights with, with customers on board uh, should happen this year in 2020, I mean. Relatively normal. I guess it's all relative. All right, Bill, you're the expert. What else are you paying attention to in space in 2020? Well, it's hard to turn our attention away from these, these human spaceflight programs. That's a very big deal and a big part of NASA's budget. But I think one of the clear highlights of the year is the launch of Mars 2020 lander. This is a, a robot that NASA is building out at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Scheduled for launch in July. It'll get there in 2021. Uh, and this is the first rover that they put down on the surface of Mars that's designed specifically to look for traces of past microbial life on the red planet. And obviously, if they found anything like that, uh, that would be a milestone moment in the history of science. 
Uh, they're also going to actually collect samples and cache them. They're going to leave them for a future mission, perhaps, to come pick them up and bring them back to Earth. A very ambitious mission, very expensive mission. So we've all got our fingers crossed watching that one. Fingers crossed. Uh, ambitious indeed. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.